Alright, so frenemies. I was gonna do this episode with the Ninja DC group, but then something happened, I had to miss it, and that was kind of a bummer, but... Hey, when Celestia closes a door, she opens a window, because, yeah, I've been looking to get back into this for a little while, now that my schedule's a little freed up, now that I'm, uh, more rested, more ready to go here. Um, yeah, I've kind of missed a lot so far. I don't think I did anything for Season 8, so, okay, quick catch up on what I thought of, um, everything from end of Season 7 to now. Uh, I thought Season 8 was the worst season, which is kind of a painfully me thing to say at this point, or at least so it feels, and I mean, I don't know. If there's a case to be made for it, uh, not being the worst season, being better than season six, which you know, was my previous champ in that category, what, and hey, mostly six and eight, mostly made by the same people, so at least I'm being consistent there. But, but okay, if there's a case to be made, it's that uh, season eight, it had variety, it had a season arc, it had... Uh, it definitely felt like there was purpose, and it was going somewhere. Uh, six was just like being washed in a sea of mediocrity, just constant episodes. Some mediocre by the show's standards, some mediocre by any standards, but just oh, again and again being hit with that. Just, like, I mean, it got to the point where I was like, I, I'm done. I, just, I, can't, I can't care about this the same way. I just can't. I, like, uh, it doesn't feel like you're having fun with it, it doesn't feel like you're doing much with the Starlight thing, just, and so, eight wasn't that, but, I mean, holy heck, like, season six, at its worst, like, it had a couple episodes where I was like, eh, it had a couple episodes where I was like, eh, eh. a few of those season eight had a couple episodes where I was like, Eh, and it had a couple episodes where I was like, eh, 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 and like, holy heck! I mean, yakety sacks, uh, or uh, what's the one with the Celestia? The one where she Twilight hires her to be in a play like that to me was all the pain of royal problem. The one with Starlight Celestia and Luna and Daybreaker and all that. Like I had, a, I had my problems with that, but like that was all the bad parts. Just oh, Celestia is so cute. Yeah, we're gonna develop her character by making her so blindly, one-dimensionally cute. Yeah, she gave he he giggles and she she she, 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 she she can't act. She can't act. She's just a pony. She can't act. She, I don't. Okay, I'm gonna step away from that one. But I mean, yeah, it it had also a lot of meh episodes and like holy heck, I just season eight. I couldn't find two great episodes to rub together uh, until, like, late middle portion of the season, there were two not just great, but fantastic gosh darn episodes in What Lies Beneath and Sounds of Silence. Like, they were, those go straight into my core favorites. I, the, it's not even funny how far above the rest of the season those were. Like, wow. And I mean... It kind of made sense because they had they hired an acclaimed playwright to write Sounds of Silence, a playwright and other TV episode guy, just someone who's won awards, seems in demand a little bit. And then Michael Vogel, who was definitely the season standout. Like the um, other episodes that I thought were at least like B pluses as such, they were his. But season six, I mean, I still said what four episodes were great in that, so yeah, and. I mean, I don't know, it's almost one of the, this is the first time I've ever considered making a case for a season as a whole instead of on an episode-by-episode -episode basis, because, you know, these seasons, they don't really do, like, uh, season-long arcs at the forefront, forefront, but, uh, okay, now we have season nine, which I actually think is really benefiting from the whole final season thing, the whole, okay, let's just, let's leave them with something to remember, let's do all the things we might have been hesitant to do before, let's, yeah, go for broke, have some fun, uh, I don't think, um, I mean, I don't know if season nine is gonna revive the whole, like, okay, every new season is the best season sort of a thing, because it seemed like season eight, uh, in my defense, not only was not that popular, but finally broke that, like, Equestria Daily, not only did it not win, like, the, the most recent season only doesn't win on Equestria Daily, when it's, like, painfully below the other seasons, which, yeah, I think it only happened in three, six, and 
now eight, but um, yeah, not only did season eight not win, the season before it didn't even win. It seemed like, um, you know, every new season was the best, but it seemed like there was a casual sort of peel away, like, oh, wait a minute, didn't we just say this, uh, season five or whatever was the best, and now it finally, yeah, full-blown seemed to, yeah, blown up, and season four of all seasons won the recent one, which, interesting choice, definitely, uh, not my favorite favorite, but definitely better than I think anything that came after, so, all right. Nine, though, um, it's, I don't know, like, how mu how great, great people are going to say it is. I like it. I I'm actually pretty excited for what it's doing. I mean, it feels so like it's so much more full of life. I think it's suffering a bit from the fact that, like, we haven't had any clear-cut direction for a while. I mean, I won't get into the season-by-season -season comparisons, because I've probably beat that drum to death. But, um, and I'll get to the episode right after this in a minute. But, okay, season arcs, like after it changed from, okay, first Twilight discovering the joys of friendship, and um, then when she reached, I guess, the same level as everyone else, everyone discovering the joys of friendship and bonding as the elements of harmony and stuff, like back when the world still felt big, the characters, everybody could not stop writing fanfiction about um, just how, like, what those episodes did, how excited they were to see where these characters could go. Then it was like, okay, season three, kind of trying to do the same thing as them, but then, like, after sort of setting it up in the first episode, bam, princess, and then after the reaction that got, trying to be like, okay, well, we need an arc of Twilight growing into being a princess, which I actually thought worked really well. Like, I know Twilight got some Mary Sue criticisms there. I was like, oh, I mean, she just had one of the most joyful events in her life happen. I can believe she's not having a lot of bad days right now, and earning some responsibilities, Princess of Friendship, which might have been an on-the-nose title, but, okay, from there, we had Season 5, which, the, okay, soon-to-be pointless cutie map, I think, like, all that that seemed to lay out is where that was, like, any direction from there, and then I brought in Starlight Glimmer at the end, so, okay, Twilight's new apprentice, who learns the same episode, or learns the same lesson three times, and then... Uh, saves the day in the end, and we sure followed through on that, huh? And now we're gonna stick her here and do things with her, so then what are we gonna do? And then, to be fair, we had what I thought was at least a, a noble attempt by Lewis and Songko to kind of refocus the lore, like, well, okay, so let's um, get Star Swirl the Bearded out here. We've been building up him for so long. Let's have payoff to that. Let's explore these shadow powers that were hinted at kind of with Nightmare Moon and stuff. Let's let's refocus the lore and start to, yeah, build the adventures they have around that. And then season eight, they're not the season editors anymore. So, well, that was fun. How about Twilight starts uh, school? That's it. She has to start a friendship school now because it's about friendship and stuff. And now season nine, okay, what's our payoff? Where has all of this been leading? Twilight has been, uh, yeah, this is where it's all been going, she's been training to take over for Celestia and Luna. Like, yeah, isn't that what it's all about? Where this has all been building up to? <laughs> okay, so now, yeah, we have coming out of the gate with beginning of the end, which I think is a great episode, don't get me wrong, it's like, I, it's an A, but kind of an A minus, because uh, not only is does the Celestia and Luna thing kind of come out of nowhere, but it's like, all right, so now, we're saying that the point is Twilight again, like her discovering the joys of friendship and actually starting to become the leader that she didn't know she could be. Okay, that, um, that was where we started out, but that was a while ago. I mean, like I, um, Cutie Map, Starlight, uh, refocus the lore, like, okay, the friendship school is probably the closest to even revolving around Twilight anymore, but she has really not felt like the point of the show for a while. So now, like, she's not only our point, but yeah, our main character again, at least in this episode. And yeah, watching them try to do that, you can feel how it 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 feels more hollow than it would have been if she had always felt concretely like our main character. Like they kind of do her lesson zero thing again, which seems to have been the default answer for a while. 
one Twilight and Twilight episodes or Twilight moments. Like, I mean, of course Twilight has been developing, has been our main character this whole time and not the character we, uh, decided we didn't know what to do with anymore now that we've changed season editors four times. So, but... All the same, though, I think Season 9, if it keeps this up, is going to end up one of the better seasons. So here's Hopin' and here's Frenemies. Three, two, one, go. And looks like we know which Frenemies we're talking about. Grogar, with his bell. you might like to know he left food out. Again. I'll deal with it when I'm done. Well, there's the enemy part. Oh. I don't trust really now. Any of you say. <laughs> Not a good recipe for friendship if you're gonna match the main six. I suggest the three of you come to some kind of accord. <laughs> when Grogar sees this, he'll realize there's no way he could survive without me. Oh, of course. That's what banners show people. Yeah, they should go pick on some innocent pony to help themselves feel better. Grogar left me in charge. No, he didn't. There'll be cupcakes. Grogar wants us to really? To Chrysalis likes cupcakes. Stop trying to absorb my essence. I wasn't doing anything of the sort. How dare you? How dare I? Do you know to who Was he not succeeding there? Like, she can just sit there through all of that and be fine? Ew. <laughs> Chrysalis, the stir-crazy angle they're doing with her is kind of fun. You all, you both did. Chrysalis, you did twice. Well, that was unsuccessful. Which is what it comes down to. I mean, on one hand, you don't know why he needs them, but on the other hand... Eh. So why won't they just betray you by using the bell on you? But yeah, I mean, you wonder why Grogar's not confident he can just steamroll the ponies with the power he has. But, uh, I mean, I guess between Discord and the fact that, like, even Tyrik with all the power period failed, he's... He sees why he should be cautious. <laughs> that was good. Okay, so Tyrik hasn't stolen any flight. Hmm. Yeah, with the weightlifting, I didn't know how much we'd see Tyrik's brains, but it looks like they're definitely remembering that he has them. Use that Shirley Temple appeal. Mm -hmm. A real friend wouldn't ask me to do something I'm not supposed to do. Says so right here in the Journal of Friendship, written by Twilight Sparkle and her <sighs> friend. Well, that's one way to justify having a conversation this on the nose. Alright, using what you've got. I like it. Both from Chrysalis's standpoint and the writer's standpoint. I mean, does he... he does have power, right? I know he can absorb... Mm, snowball effect. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Cozy Glow is such a gimmick, like... A, a gag character, almost, or villain. Hmm. Well, yeah, the winds, that's gonna catch up with you if you, this is your approach. But yeah, like, her whole thing, like... She's a kid who... Happens to be a mastermind because that's funny, because 
cute looking kid. Wow, she wouldn't be this evil, would she? I didn't try to. What? It took about five minutes to deduce that Grogar was right. None of us could make it up alone. So rather than subject myself to the elements, I decided to let you two face the danger. Take what you okay. learned and use it to my advantage. <laughs> this might be one of the greatest Tyrick moments I've seen. She brings this out of him. Doesn't Tyrick have power? Okay. I didn't save you because I like you. I did it because... because I... Need us? Yes. <laughs> I'm a pathetic pony princess. I made a detailed list of all the ways I'm a failure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay! <laughs> Jeez, you got off lucky, dude. You got off easy. Huh. Callbacks. <laughs> Through the hole in her leg. Honestly, though, this episode is actually probably the closest we've come to actual character development for Cozy. That, yeah. Tyrick calling her out on her insincerity. Um, talking about... Okay, well, that was Tyrick. Not too heavy. Whatever. But yeah. Saying, like... Yeah, this is the real you, and Cozy trying to deny it. I mean, it was still mostly gag stuff that's, like, Cozy's character. Basically, seems to start and end it, like, okay, the cute act she puts on, when really she's awful, like, I mean, the, the interesting stuff seems to be just what a mastermind she is, but actual characterization... Uh, well, that didn't take a ton of convincing. Yes, it feels... No! Ooh. The magic of friendship is like a disease. An infection that spreads to those around mm. you. Yeah, she caught where this was going. I will not let it get me. More sorry, almighty Krogar. Mm. Well, this seems like a recipe for these guys to lose. We're so much more powerful. When we work as a team. Okay, so how's this gonna go then? Are we gonna get Grogar plus Bell to be the most powerful thing the ponies have ever faced? Or are we gonna get him successfully being backstabbed and uh, Chrysalis and these guys ending up on top? Um, I don't know, like... Okay, like, I can understand that they wouldn't agree to be friends, that that's what Chrysalis would say at the end. Um, it's... There's something almost unsatisfying about them taking it that far. Like, I mean, even though, you know, we, it was pretty interesting to see them as characters that, like... I mean, heck, like, I'm a fan of Cobra Kai right now, for example, and, like, even the, the worst characters on the show, uh... Much like this, okay, just seeing, I mean, they're, they're not in battle mode at all time. There are other things that happen, granted, they made, like, some of Tyrix and, like, the, like, the joking around with each other, all of them a little bit, some of the silly stuff was a little hammy, but, um, like, yeah, just seeing them just act off each other, I mean, having to take... Yeah, a full range of emotions into account, having to act off a full range of emotions. I mean, heck, full-blown villains of the show, you don't always get to see that happen in anywhere. And, yeah, definitely a fun approach to take. Seeing them go through lighter emotions can be pretty darn interesting, and it was fun. Like They, they all have colorful personalities that make that a good time, so... um. But yeah, the um, like at the end, just it 
well, it seemed like what we were going, what we were building towards was them uh, growing into a team that's really going to be a threat here, that's really going to, like, give the main six some trouble, like I was expecting it to end with, like, okay, main six, you better watch out now, and instead it ends with what seems like uh, is going to be the key to their downfall here, which, I don't know, I mean, this show, um, with these season arc stories, it seems like it's only willing to go so, uh, complex with its friendship morals, and, like, if it, so, I guess I'll be a little disappointed if it's just, okay, see, we planted the seed here, they weren't friends, they failed, ta-da! Yeah, I just, there's something kind of unsatisfying about that, like, I mean, I, uh, I, I, might have been okay with them saying, like, okay, well, we're not friends, but maybe we can be, title drop, frenemies? Like, which, okay, but that's not what we're gonna get. We have, uh, we still have a group where everyone wants to be in charge and where they're, um, just as likely to take each other down as they are the main six here, so, all right, I am interested to see where that's gonna go. Um, like, I actually... I was thinking that the seed they plant for a belated payoff might be uh, that our villains that were hardcore not redeemed actually, like, through friendship with each other, realize that, okay, maybe it's not so bad after all, but, uh, well, there you go. What more can you say about this one? It, uh... Hey, I mean... It, like, it, it's not, there's, I guess, not as much, yeah, sort of colorful fun as, uh, Sparkle 7 or, uh, the beginning of the end, but, like, to make up for it, it has, like, even more character interplay with, uh, at least as interesting characters, like, I mean, I guess Sparkle 7 if you want character to play, was probably ahead of the beginning of the end. Um, like it had, actually, like, it comes off as kind of a spike episode when all's said and done, and it had that great moment with him and Fluttershy. Uh, it had offhand fun, like, uh, you yeah, know, Rainbow Dash and Zephyr Breeze again, and Rarity, and the Rarity Investigates callback, and I mean, it's um, still kind of just disjointed fun, so... I guess I'm having the same reaction to this one that I kind of had to those other ones that, uh, like, uh, that kind of an A- minus material, like, not, I'm over the moon for this, this is one of the best episodes I've ever seen, but, like, it, it stands out as something special, and this time, um, you know, I went on and on about this before, it's not, it's not that, uh, like, trying to figure out a purpose is, like, trying to find it, what the heart of the, the story is, like, that that's a drawback, because here, okay, new villain, like, a new villain, new villain dynamic trying to team up to take down the main six, I mean, yeah, it's right there, that's, yeah, that's right there for it, it's just, like, it seems like it was, um, like, I, it seems like it took that and it hit a triple, but not a home run. If that, that's probably, if that makes sense, just, yeah. It was kind of having, like, gag-style fun with them through most of it. The song, um, kind of a belated way to say that they all want to be in, or a drawn-out way to say that they all want to be in charge. Like, that didn't seem like it was, um... Necessary per se, I mean, like some songs can just be for the fun of a song, but, um, I mean, I didn't think that was, like, a particularly special one. Um, Grogar is still a pretty good villain, and I liked his flashback seeing animation of Gusty the Great. I mean, it, it, it was indistinct enough so that maybe um, interpreting gender is a no-go, but I mean, just the way they drew Gusty, and heck, maybe original Gusty wasn't supposed to be, oh, wait a minute, no, didn't they say that the, uh, original ponies, that there are no guys among them, like, yeah, maybe Gusty was supposed to be a girl, um, cause yeah, I think, I might read something like My Little Pony Brothers were supposed to be a thing, like, hey, boy ponies, 
I don't know. Okay, so... Okay, so yeah, now that I think about it, maybe the most likely thing is that Gusty was, is, and has always been female in the lore. But yeah, the way they drew, um... Gusty, the, the, like, the eyes, the flowing mane, it seemed like they were trying to make sure there was something distinctly feminine about it, so... Okay, but that aside, um, yeah, I like the flashback. Grogar is a good villain with the, yes, throwing his, um, black cage magic around. I'm, like, he's able to, like, create these, I mean, I don't know, it looks like something, like, is able to shoot liquid steel or something like that, but, yeah, I, I can't put my finger on what exactly it looks like, but, okay, no, he's, he has the swagger, he's a good villain, uh, he's not as colorful as any of the others, but, I mean, okay, the guy who's supposed to waltz into the show and be the most powerful one at all, of all, and put them in their place, I mean, that's probably what makes sense for him to be like for now it's so much better an approach than the storm king like oh no we have to make him fun he's wacky he goes day night day night day night he was annoying as all heck i wanted tempest to snap at the fact that she's been serving an idiot and give him the boot and take the magic scepter thing herself and then just have the finale be her versus the main six and then having to save her soul like that that probably i think that would have been more powerful too but Okay, so I'm glad that Grogar is not the Storm King. He's alright as a character. He's really cool as a villain. Um, oh, I guess uh, just not too much more to say about this, honestly. That, uh, yeah, thought it was uh, really fun. I thought uh, I liked pretty much everything they did with it. It's, I mean, it's not like, yeah, the villain dynamic for the ages. Like, um, oh, oh my god, I've seen some of the most interesting, powerful character progression that I could have possibly asked for, but I'll stick with A-. Uprooted, uh, I mean, I actually, it's a Nicole Dubok episode, I didn't think that she was, um, such a, like a major, um, what's the word, contributing factor, I didn't think she was a huge boon to the show after season eight, but I mean, I actually thought she did a really good job on kind of the third episode formula, like, okay, reestablish the dynamic now that the big two-parter has happened, and yeah, the student six, I mean, they actually have really great chemistry together, they have kind of what I missed from the main six, and uh, yeah, I like the, okay, the rebuilding sort of an angle they did with the tree, now a clubhouse, I thought that worked pretty well, I thought that was a good way to um, have, like, just not say, oh, well, throw everything out the window, that, that's tough luck, we, it's the finale, so we've got to do that now, it's like, okay, no, there's, like, where we go from here is important, and they laid that out, like, how the old stuff still matters and whatnot, okay, so, I liked Uprooted, kind of a B-plus episode there, Sparkle 7, again, with kind of the same problem there, there's a ton of fun stuff going for that episode, I, I shouldn't have, I should stop leading with the negatives of episodes, I think, are great. Sparkle 7, I think it's better than the 100th episode. I had a ton of fun with it. You can tell in that episode that all of the voice actors who wrote the episode, they all, um, or at least they came up with the idea for the episode, um, all the main character voice actors, you can tell how much fun they're having here, how, how they kind of see their characters after all this time, like what they get out of voicing these characters, including Kathy Westluck, who, uh, yeah, it's a great Spike episode, to be sure. Um, but, okay, yeah, once again, like, trying to give us these special episodes with, um, just like a core of what we love, of, um, yeah, what should be driving this show, what should be at the heart of this show, I mean, it, it, again, feels like it kind of has to create that out of, um, ingredients that have long since been tossed to the side and gone stagnant, or just left open, left like, okay, well, they're they're done, or they're, yeah, we're not interested in them anymore, and it's like, no, wait, wait, but brush that off, and they still have something left, and what, Twilight, and Shining Armor's thing, and the sibling dynamic, I mean, yeah, Twilight, they, I, uh, like, other than her Lesson Zero phase, their other, um, go-to move to make her interesting seems, uh, 
to be to make her, like, surprisingly childish, to make her, like, um, adorkably childish, I guess, which, to be fair, works better, but I mean, I, um, I feel like they, it, yeah, because, um, I don't know, Twilight was just sort of the princess of friendship, the, the I mean, I think, for a while there, there were people calling for her to be done, like, oh no, perfect, at the end of season four, she's in the perfect place, leave her there, move on to the others, and, I mean, well, okay, I've said it a bunch of times now, <laughs> you know, but, but, um, okay, so once again, kind of an A-, minus, a really fun episode, really benefiting from this go-for-broke end of the series attitude, same problems, I think, from, yeah, trying, having to, uh, yeah, build some, like, a, a direction that should be the final arc, the final direction, the, um, yeah, what should be at the heart of the final season of the show that, you know, the, we, we haven't had established that for a while, so, okay, um, that Point of No Return, it's a Jillian M. Barrow episode, she does, uh, well, she's a, she was an MLP chapter book writer, elementary school chapter book writer, and I've, and saying for a while now, like all of her episodes, kind of feel like um, these elementary school chapter books, like Slice of Life, but not in a really like tactful. Um, um, look at all this personality. Look at yeah, isn't this what life is like in sort of a deliberate kind of way, in a uh, yeah, cut and dry kind of way? And I mean, Point of No Return was that. I thought it was pretty good for that. I thought there was a lot that was cute there. Um, not that works so. So that was a B minus common ground. Uh, I like Quibble Pants last episode so much better. Uh, the, um, but like, keep leading with the negatives. Uh, the, it had a really like a good idea for a direction here. Like, okay, Quibble. Um, it, um, well, the, it had a good idea for a story about kind of the, um, not blended families, but yes, yeah, step parents, that sort of thing, and I mean, they actually, they make a lot of insightful points here, like, um, this kid thinking Quibble's trying to replace her dad, um, the mom slash girlfriend saying that, okay, yeah, one good sign is that Quibble's friends really care about him, that's an insightful piece of advice, so, okay, I just thought they focused at the on the hijinks way too much that the, um, not very funny hijinks just constantly needed to be at front and center. <laughs> he can't play football! He really can't play football! No, he really, really can't play football! Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've seen the show be so funny that, I mean, it. it's not, and stuff like that, people make the four kids excuse a lot. No, it's not because these writers are comedians who have their fingers right on the pulse of what kids like. It's because they're freelance writing majors who decided to try to be comedians in an episode here by dragging stuff other people did to make them laugh once upon a time, or stuff that other people imitated and then imitated and then imitated and now they want to imitate now that it's gone stale as a dry cracker, but Okay, that aside, um, She's All Yak, pretty similar, actually. I thought it had some pretty intriguing ideas on the table there. Like, yeah, Yona saying, that, that picture of Pony on poster. Yona need to be like Pony, like, yeah, normalizing, um, certain things that, yeah, making, um, anyone who doesn't fit the norm feel like they're supposed to fit the norm. That, a lot of intriguing ideas there. It seemed to almost deliberately pull the pull away from that and go for the hijinks that what like Yona she put so much work into learning this it starts to feel like she's learning a craft that not just trying to change herself but legit learning something but of course when they go to the ball that yeah they go right back to the old oh she's so bad it's a total disaster she should never have tried to change herself which I mean yeah, Yona's cute, she has a lot of personality, so I, I mean, both that and Common Ground, like, they were potential A-grade episodes that I felt like ended up B-grade episodes, because they were content, even all too willing to do the 
the typical sort of stuff, so... Alright, and you know what? I think I'm going to move all that to the end here, because I... That went on way too long, so... If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If not... Well, I didn't want to be friends anyway. And if you want to see more videos, click the link on the right. Otherwise, just check the description for more links, and I'll see you next time.